In North America, the pilgrims came looking for religious freedom. Whereas in South America, they went there basically to loot and pillage and plunder, and they didn't care anything about the religious freedom. They cared about the gold. <clears throat> so the traditions were preserved pretty intact in Mexico, in, uh, in Colombia, in Ecuador, in Peru, in Chile. The, and including among the traditions that were preserved was a body of prophecy was a body of prophecy and of calendar making and of, of understanding the cycles of nature and of time. <clears throat> so the, the prophecies of 2012 among the Inca, and everyone focused on, focuses on them slightly differently. The Inca say that in December 21st, 2012, the time will end. We will come to the end of time as we know it. And it doesn't mean that humanity is going to end, or that the world or the earth is going to end, but the time will end. The time will end. The, for the Mayans, what happens, the Mayans have 23 different kinds of calendars. They have a very long count calendar that goes for 16.5 billion years. They have smaller and smaller calendars, some of which are 20 days long. What happens, and you can think of these as, as gears in a watch or in a clock. What happens on December 21st is that all of these gears, the very, very big ones and the very, very small ones all line up and a new cycle of time begins again. So for us to really get a sense of this, we have to understand how time works. In indigenous traditions, early and late are not a condition of man. Early and late are a condition of the day, but not of man. It's early in the day, it's late in the day. But you're never early and you're never late, which is pretty infuriating if you're waiting for someone. <laughs> in the West, we're possessed by time. And the indigenous peoples have time. They have time, but they're possessed by the earth. So let me give you a sense of how this happens. In the West, we own the land. This is a very foreign notion to an indigenous person. They, don't, they can't understand the sense of owning the land. How can you own the earth? If anything, the earth owns you. So that the early Americans were consummate map make, uh, calendar makers because their mythology of creation had to do with the division of time, not the division of space, the division of time. So that the shaman owns time. They don't own the land. The notion that somebody would come from so far away was totally foreign to them because the most you ever did was to leave your village to go to one of the neighboring villages or to go to the port that was a day's canoe right away. You never left the land, you were owned by the land. We travel everywhere. How many of you still live in this town that you were born in? Okay, three people. That's not bad, that's about 3%. In a traditional society, you don't leave the land where you were born in, your village. But we travel freely through space. But for the shamans, and this seems totally natural to us, we get in a car, we go to where we're headed, perfectly natural. Equally natural is for the shaman to, who understands that they are owned by the land, but that they own time. They have free time. And they can travel through time. In the same way that we can travel through space.